when Pat first came to me and we were talking about the ball flight laws, as a matter of fact, the, the, the first time I spent with him, we didn't talk about golf swing. Because mm-hmm. the first time I met him, you know, he was at TPC Scottsdale, and um, I didn't know if we were going to have a relationship together, and I didn't want to overwhelm him and blow him away. So we just talked about the basics of ball flight. Mm-hmm. And Pat, we worked together at Sea Island at McGladry. Yeah. And he's, he's standing there ready to play a tournament in two days. <laughs> I'm not about to change his golf swing 48 hours before he tees off. Right. We just talked about ball flight again. And he was asking me questions about should the club face be square? Mm-hmm. And I would say two things. First of all, when someone asks you or they say, a, uh, you, you hear in golf instruction articles, square off the club face. Square to what? Right. And then secondly, and this is a statement that a, a lot of people, it, it, it leaves them with their eyes wide open. You can slice every ball that you hit for the rest of your life with a club face dead square to the target. Mm-hmm. Or you can play on the PJ Tour and have the club face virtually never facing the target. Yeah. Because every ball that Pat Perez is standing here hitting right now, his club face is aimed somewhere other than the final destination. Right. Remember, this is the start line. Mm-hmm. And if I have this six iron aimed directly at the flag, but my path is six degrees to the left of the target, I'm going to slice every ball I hit for the rest of my life. Right. But I've got a square club face to the target. Right. Right. And, and that's what the viewer needs to understand. Right. The other thing is, too, is there's this simplified view that you know, these train tracks, everything's lined up and everything's got to be, you know, facing directly yes. where the ball's going. And it's all, it's all wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong. And, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll expand upon that and say something once again that sounds kind of crazy, but uh, let's assume let's assume that we give Pat a golf club. Let's say we give Pat a four iron, and let's say that uh, we've got a laser beam attached to the club face, and the mm-hmm. laser beam is pointing directly at the flag. And then let's say that Pat is parallel left, you know, railroad track analogy. Yeah, let's yeah, say yeah. that he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then let's say that he swings on plane, which I don't know what that means, but we've all heard that. Right, right, right. And let's say that at the moment of impact, the face is directly at the flag. He swung on plane, yada, yada, yada. The golf ball has no chance of going at the hole. <laughs> right. right. It has no chance of going at the hole. The ball will always draw away from the hole. Always. Right. Assuming he didn't turn the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I, I mean, think about that for a second. Right foot rolls over, arms come down, just like that. How does that feel to you? It feels nice. So, you know, I, and people ask me all the time, what handicap should I be before I start to work the ball? I have no problem with a 25 handicap or learning to draw the ball. Why wouldn't he? Right. I mean, think about it. If we can't hit a straight shot, that means we are working the ball. <laughs> Yeah. Because to hit a straight shot, it's almost impossible. Right. So, you know, and this is one thing, you know, Pat and I talked about it as well. To hit a ball dead straight, you got to have the face exactly at the target. you got to have the path exactly matching the face. And then you got to hit it in the center of the face so there's no gear effect. Mm-hmm. Now, how many people can do that? One. One. He's dead. <laughs> so if we can't, if, we, if, 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 if hitting it straight is not logical, then by definition, curving it is logical. Yeah. Stick man. Trackman says, guys, right here, take a look. This is great. Trackman is telling us he had a face angle of 3.7 degrees to the right. He launched the ball 4.3 degrees to the right. He had a spin axis tilt of negative 5, which is indicative of a draw. And one thing that we need to understand, Pat, did you hit that center face? Of course you did. Everybody watching this understand, if the face is 3-7 to the right and he hit it in the center with no gearing, for the ball to have an axis tilt of 5, that means his path uh, was about 5 degrees to the right, which is, which is Pat, exactly what we're trying That's to what do. We're trying to do. I want you to ingrain the feeling. Don't overload the wrist and don't rotate Uh, Pat, once again, was it center face? Yes. Okay. Guys, he had a face angle of six degrees to the right, and the spin axis was negative 0.6, which means it had a hint of a draw, so his path was seven degrees to the right. And, and, and I'm doing this to train him. 
-hmm. I don't want his past seven degrees right with to the right with a six iron in competition, but I want him to train it. I want to push him as far this way as I can, mm -hmm. so when he gets in the heat of the battle at Hilton Head, mm -hmm. and he comes back down to earth, his path will be two or three degrees right. to the right. That's right. what I'm doing. No wrist hinge, no left forearm rotation, please. On this one, it says our face angle was dead square. Zero. Now think about this. Uh, this is a great one because the amateur golfer every month in Golf Magazine, Golf Digest, is told to have a square club face. Well, Pat, your club face was dead square. Uh, you're one of the best players on the PGA Tour, and that ball did what? It drew. It drew. drew. You're probably it drew, off the, it drew off the target. Right. So it, it drew off the target. It went away from the hole. Yeah. And take a look at the TrackMan numbers. His face was negative 0.2, which is zero square. He had a spin axis of almost negative four, which means Pat's golf ball drew away from the hole. And now you might have a 20-footer coming back. You may be in the bunker. Who knows? But the bottom line is this. He had a square club face. And this is a world-class player with a square club face. The 20 handicapper who's being told to have a square club face, no bueno. It's not good. It's not good. As a matter of fact, if your face would have been a couple of degrees open or to the right, perfect. you'd have drawn it onto the hole. Yeah. Exactly. No hand stick man. None. Those numbers should all be right. Okay. Should all be plus. On this one, we have a club path of. It didn't give us a club path. We didn't get the down. We got a face angle of 1.8 to the right. And we got a spin axis of plus 0.9, which is basically a straight ball. So his face and his path were pretty close to matching there which is what I'm after with Pat. I want everything shallow and to the right. Push forward. Is that on it? Right on it. Okay. Where'd the ball start, Pat? Split the mirror. It started out, split the mirror. Pat's face angle was 0.6 to the right. Slightly open, spin axis tilt of negative 0.6. He had a gentle draw with a face open to the target. Open to the target, but slightly close to the path. All right, pick up the speed a little bit, but do not lose the feeling of not, not this. None of this torque, don't turn it down. Was that it? Good. That was it. Okay. We got a club head speed of 93 miles an hour. We have a face angle of 1.3 degrees to the right. We have a spin axis of negative 2.6. Guys, we're, we're talking textbook numbers now. A carry of 190 yards, and that's the six iron? Yeah, it wasn't all my fault. But well, of good. course not. I mean, you still got you still got another five miles an hour in the tank. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just reading off some numbers here. Uh, 190 in the air, spin rate of almost six grand. Uh, and the key here, once again, Face angle 1.3 degrees to the right. Spin axis negative 2.6, which is indicative of a draw. And I, I'll let you step on one as long as you promise not to overload the wrist angles and don't try to turn it down. Leave it alone. Face angle of 1.5. Spin axis of plus one. Pat, was that dead solid? Little thin. Little thin. Okay, so we might have had a little gearing there, so we really don't know on that one. Carry of 196 yards. Here we go. It started at it and drew off it. Okay. Club head speed of 96. We have a face angle of basically zero again. We have a spin axis of negative 4.8, carry of 201. So that means, guys, his club face is dead square. This is a world-class player with a dead square club face, and he does not have a desirable result. So when we're thinking of ball flight, and for you instructors out there, you got to get out of this, you need a square club face stuff. You don't. You need a club face that's going to start the ball somewhere away from the target with a path that's going to curve the ball to the target. Because his club face is square, to the target it's going to start there but guys if the ball starts at the target if it curves it's always curving away not good
I want the ball working to the hole. Pat, would you agree? Yes. Smoke. And the last one was six iron. We got a face angle of 0.7 to the right, a spin axis of negative 0.5. Those numbers are absolutely surgical. 192 in the air. Pat, great job. That's about stock right there. Your shoulders were a little bit to the right on that swing. Ah, uh, your face was just a little to the left on that one. Then I, I know that we're dealing in Right. We're dealing in riddles. Right. Have you guys heard me say, well, Pat, I think you're aiming that face a little too far to the right. I don't think you quite completed your turn. You got a little quick on that one. I don't believe in that jargon, that dogma. I think it's just, I think it's right. jibber jabber. I don't believe in it. Well, I think what you've got is with the, with the data from the track man and the explanation, mm -hmm. what happens is from the data on the track man and from the ball flight that you're seeing, you've got those two things reconciled in your mind. Correct. So it's the ball flight that's actually telling you what happened on the ground, Correct. and that you're 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 moving back into the body from the ball Correct. and from the I ball flight. Agree. I would agree. So I'll give you guys a reason why I didn't like why I didn't like any of this because I spent years working on the backswing, yeah, and never ever worrying about ball to here. Yeah, I always worked on you know get it here and get this position here and then this and this, never thinking about what yeah. the ball is going to do. So I have a piece of me that. I have zero thought about here. Right. You know, right now I got none of this because all I'm thinking on is pushing here and this. Right. You know, I don't, wherever this is, it is, but I know that I can get to here. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not worried about much of this. But you know what, from the ball past, you know, for all of that that's going on, uh, uh, if you can control that, You've, you've kind of got it licked and it's just like uh, Mo Norman said he's even talking about what the he said I want the shaft to sing after yeah. the ball's gone I want that's what I want to feel like is the fastest part of what I do yeah. that's all I'm feeling right here you know obviously if I'm worried about all of this stuff in here I don't have enough time to by the time I get here to go okay well, I gotta push forward to keep that face open the other thing is too Pat you're a good enough athlete that if you're just you if you're just worried about from here forward, right? The yeah. stuff that you intuitively or, or athletically are just capable of doing to make that happen. It's all in there already. Alright, so right, let's see it. Keep it forward. Now use the edge of that right foot to push forward and let that foot roll over. Oh. Yeah, you, you can't you can't do it better than that. How about that, guys? Yeah. Feel the face more here. Yeah. It's not there anymore. It's yeah. not there. As a matter of fact, I was going to throw something there. Set up again. And watch this, Mike, because I, I think you guys will agree. If I can get his ball as far forward with an eight on as I did a three wood. Yep. He's going to hit it higher. Yep. And for him to draw it, he's going to really have to have the path to the right because he can't cheat it with the ball being back. Yeah. So ball forward. Now come through impact in slow motion. Come through. I want you to have the loft facing. I want you to feel that it's facing the clouds and still draw this ball. Okay. I don't want you to feel this anymore. Okay? <clears throat> You're going to push forward off that right foot. Have the loft pointed to the clouds. Huh? Just a little more that way. And you agree that's a smoked high draw? Yeah, it is. Okay. When I get it off, when I get it yes, Mike? right. We did a, we did a drill uh, with elk like this. Remember the honey hole thing? Where we, where we kept moving with the driver, moving the ball forward, 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 until it was impossibly forward. And, and I said, look, at a certain point, the ball's gonna start going the other way. Yeah. And, uh, and so toying with that, ball position that was something he worked on he called it finding the honey hole he'd, he'd work it as far forward and then start working it back to find the optimum curve. and then he found it all right here we go pat farther forward now push forward off the right foot and have the loft pointed to the clouds you agree that's money that's nice there you go 
Jersey. Joe, the other thing is, too, a lot of guys are afraid to get the ball that far forward because they're so used to turning the club face down, right? You do that with a ball that far forward and you're gone. Right. Gone. And, and they can't, they can't. See, here's the thing, Pat. If I have you keep the loft facing the sky, what's the only way you're going to be able to draw the ball? Pat. You got it. You can turn it down and start it left and draw it. But if he, if he keeps that loft right there, guys, that pass got to be three, four, five to the right, forcing him to get out to the right. Yeah. Farther forward. Now face the loft straight up in that pair and jack it up there. <laughs> Look at that, boys. Yeah, there you go. And this is what we did at Torrey. Finished second, hardest golf course yeah. on tour. The thing is, I wouldn't even call that high. No. It only looks high because we're going down 5%. Right, right, right. You know, if we were hitting it this way, or if we were hitting it that way uphill, you'd say it was low. It only looks high because of this range. We were on the other side. But I, I, again. You know, tour courses are hard. The greens are like that stuff the cart's parked on. Yeah. The ball has to come in. You know, Tiger told me for years, he said, you hit it too low. If you've got a four or five on your hand, you cannot hold the green. Well, Jack Nicholas, they asked him his biggest advantage, and he said, I could hit a two iron over a tree that most people had to take a six iron to get over. Mm -hmm. That was his biggest advantage. And we advantage. used that shot, actually. We used that shot a couple weeks ago at, uh, what the hell was it, Tampa. I had a tree that was like right here where this cactus was. Yeah. There was another 20 feet. I hit four iron over it. I told Asia, so watch this. This is what we've been doing, Joe. I put that thing up here. Instead of just hitting a nine iron, a hundred yards, I hit four <laughs> iron, two hundred yards, 200 yards, and I got near the green. <laughs> okay, so here I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna put in a little feeling here. Go ahead and set up for me, please. Ball really forward. Now to draw this ball, I don't want you to tilt back to try to hit it up in the air. I want you to still push off the right foot forward. But right here is how, when I want the legs to push up. I want you to feel your chin, your chest, everything go. Bam! Just like Jack and Tiger, Greg Norman. I want you to really make their MGM logo. I want everything to go up there, forward. I don't want it to tilt backwards. Go forward and then go straight up. I just think that's a normal flight. I think it's top 10 point in the world. Farther forward. Now point the loft straight to the clouds. Yes? Yeah, I mean, it faded a, a touch, but it actually held its line pretty good for that wind. Pep, if you move forward and you point that loft to the sky, how is that ball going to start well? It's not. And I don't care. I've told you a hundred times. I don't care if it goes right. Well, your rights are just little fades. Yeah, they're I not slices. I don't care if they're right. Do this right here. Point the law straight into the clouds and draw it. You got to push forward off that right foot to do it. There you go. That's what I wanted to see. That's the best one, yeah. Yeah. You know, the other thing is too, Pat, is that when you've got it that for, far forward, uh, you've got to commit to going forward yeah. to get it. Well, right? See, yeah. I get in tournament time and I screwed it back. Well, see, at Tampa, you sent me the text. You said ball forward out. Yeah, but that's because I didn't have... That's because I would stop. Oh, yeah. Sure. And then, and then this, of course, it's going to go that way. I you weren't pushing wasn't off the right all, foot. I wasn't doing all that. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, doing all I agree. That. I agree. I agree. I agree. It wasn't it wasn't out. I just wanted to make, you know, I just went back to some of the old stuff of just getting it to go out to the right and draw back. But it wasn't very high. So as you're, as you're doing this, as you get that ball forward and you're thinking, I'm going to jack it up in the air, make sure that we use that right foot to push. We don't spin it. I want you to feel the inside edge of that shoe and really push your hips forward before you push up. How good is that? Small. Yeah. Just talk about. You said guys aren't thinking. I'm thinking all the way until I've hit the shot, exactly where the face needs to be, the path needs to be. And that's it? Because where sure. it was, sure. was horrendous. So if I don't think about it, I just stand up here and hit it. Sure. Right. It's not going to do that. So yeah, I'm thinking about it. They're thinking. I have the same thought all day. Face, path. Right. I have it all day. Right. So 
Yeah. Well, and I don't call that a I don't call it a swing thought. Right. Well, you know, when you hear the commentators say, "I think he's thinking too much," or "He's overthinking," I don't think it's the thinking. I think it's indecision. Yeah. If the tour player is lost, if he doesn't understand what's making the ball do what it's doing, if he doesn't know how to fix it, then he might be panicking. Yeah. But it's not that he's thinking too much. The root cause is is the indecision, the lack of understanding, the, the panicking. Yeah. But it's not thinking too much. I don't agree with that. Well, there's so much to calibrate into any shot. There has to be a lot of things. Correct. Well, when a player of his caliber walks to the shot, he's thinking about his lie. Yeah. He feels the wind blowing across his face, maybe. Uh, he's chatting with the caddy. They've got a yardage. Um, I want to hit it past the hole. I want to hit it short of the hole. I'm going to hit it high. I'm going to hit it low. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to draw. I mean, there's there's thought going on you here. You can't people. just yeah, you can't just show up and hit a shot. Right. It's not like a driving range where you look at one of these pins and there's nothing around it. No. Well, the other thing yeah. is too when you talk when you talk a shot uh, out loud, what you're going to do, that's that's another level of commitment, right? Yeah. Because if you're just thinking it. But when you actually say it out loud, you start to mean it more. Right. So your conversation with your caddy becomes really important. Of course. And, you know, because this is Masters Week, it's rather fitting that we're talking about this because just a couple of nights ago I was looking at the replay of the 86 Masters, my favorite round of golf that's ever been played. When Jack got to the 16th tee, uh, the commentator for CBS Sports, I think it was Pat Summerall, might have been Pat, but he asked uh, he asked uh, Tom Weisskopf, because Weisskopf had the 16th hole. Right. He said, Tom, what's Jack thinking? Oh, if I knew that. And then Tom said, if I knew what Jack Nichols was thinking, I might have won this tournament. <laughs> so there you go. He's yeah. thinking. Yeah. Well, the other the analogy I use is it's a different. It's like playing pool. You're either playing call shots or you're playing slop. There you go. And guy who can play call shots got to have more skill, right? Well, of course. You're so far from hitting hope when oh, you're yeah. on the PGA Tour. You got to be very. You look, at, you look at Jack Nichols. How slow Nichols was, right? Yeah. He wasn't standing there worrying about you know if his bill pay was on time, or you know you know was his car going to run when he got. Him? He wasn't thinking about any of that stuff. He's not overthinking. He's putting everything into play. He's looking at this eight iron shot and going, all right, well, the wind's here, bunker's there, pin's here. I know which way it rolls from here to there. It rolls, it funnels this way, this and that. That's not overthinking. No. That's being prepared. Right. That's preparing for the shot. Right. So by the time he does get to the ball, he goes, well, I've already done all my work. I thought about it now. I gotta put the ball, I gotta put yeah. the face on the ball. Yep. I, mean, I agree with Joe. I don't think there is overthinking. No, no, I agree with that too. And I now, think overthinking could be. There's indecision and confusion. There's, you know, if you have no idea where all this is and you're thinking about, oh my God, well, let me see where, you know, how am I going to hit this? I got no idea what I'm doing. You know, you're lost. Where can I miss this? Yeah. That's yeah. different. Now, it's not overthinking. That's thinking right. as well, but it's just not having that much of an idea. But you take the greats that have played, they didn't overthink at all. They just, they were preparing for. What yep. they knew they were going to do. Yeah. You think Nick Faldo wasn't preparing for those shots he hit for the Another, those another slow guy. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, there's so many variables, and once you've got them all put into your noggin, that's that's the analysis of it. And then 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 you get a clear picture of what you're you're trying to do, and you can do it. You know, we got you know I play here in Estancia, and I'll go out here every day of the week, and I actually won't even think about a shot. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll stand here. Once I get on it, there's so much grass. You know, the greens are big, they're friendly, the pins usually in the middle for right. members, all that stuff. So all I'm thinking about is just this one thought. Now all of a sudden, you, if you made this tournament PGA Tour tough, it would take me twice as long to play. Right. If you brought down our fairways, we can get to 50 yards wide, 60 yards wide. And some some years we have no rough. Right. So there is no thought. Right. You know, but I ha I have to... For myself, I have to know that, let's say I missed it way over on the left side of the fairway. Yeah, I'm in the fairway. Right. But I know what that means on the tour. Right. That's either bunker, OB, water hazard. So, you know, I've got right. to kind of get myself to get focused on a little better right. of a target. But PGA Tour Golf, I mean, it is, you've got to be precise every <laughs> shot. If right. you're going to win, you better be precise all the time. Plus, when you're out here, if it's spinning sideways a bit, you're not leaking money out there. Exactly. <laughs> right? No, exactly. Take a little late iron and just hit it about you know, 110 yards. 
Look at that. And that's the way you. I want you to hit a 300-yard drive. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. I can't same, wait. Same thing. I can't wait to get that into the drive. You know, it'll, it's going to take more than a day, but at least I know the, the feeling. Yeah. You know, when I have this, at least I know what the feeling is for when I finally. Well, that get and to, it. to to hit it, take a half swing, and to and to uh, compress the ball that way to create that sound. Yeah. That reinforcement in that. your ear is going to tell you. That Here we go. Yeah. I want you to hit that same shot. Nothing changes. I mean, I was ready to put this up his ass at Tory. <laughs> we sat there for three days. I'm getting ready to play a course at 7,700 yards, and I'm hitting four irons that are going 105 yards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's telling me I can win. And I said, you're right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and you are on good as that. That's why I don't get into long clubs that much, you know, because I, I want to make sure that I can get them with this, because, you know, you're scoring on, you, you need to hit a six down at, 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 on the tour. I mean, you've got to be able to hit drivers and all that kind of stuff, but you're really scoring clubs, or the, the clubs I don't score with. Right. The last, you know, 10 years have always been, I'm not very good from, like, 140 and in. Right. You know, so I'll try to take the sandwich and hit it 125. Right. I've got five clubs now I can hit 125. Right. You're, you're a full swing guy. Which is guy so before. much different. That's, you know, you know what, what I mean? Full like, glass. Yeah, I, got, I got one gear. Look at this, Mike. See how the wrist angles are just kind of responding, like you said, to the inertia Yeah, of the exactly. And watch this. In the downstroke pad, I'm going to zoom in on the wrist angles. Watch this. Look at that. See, that's what I call keeping that width. Look at that. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. And now watch this. Yeah. See, Pat, that's 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 exactly right. Now watch right the, there. Watch this is the beautiful picture. That is just gold. And yeah. Let's get back to the arms. Just riding the body, riding the pivot around. Make the ball draw for me, and show me some straighter divots. Yes, that's what that's how I want you to finish. Right here, arms on the body. There's impact. I go right around the corner. Arms are on the body. Show it to me. Arms on the body. Would you agree that's money? That wind is stopping that from going. Good. Because, Pat, I want to show you something. You know how you have that look on camera where the, it goes wham? Yeah. Now, watch this. If I stay bent over longer this way, after impact, my arms can stay on my body and I can still draw the ball. When you stand up, watch, what, watch where my hands go. When you stand up, that's yeah, what no, tends I to pull. You're talking about that. Yes. Yes. So when you come through the shot, I want you to keep your shoulders tilted, keep your arms on your body, and don't be afraid of the handle turning the corner. I don't want you to throw it out here like this. No, of course not. But I don't want you to flatten out your shoulders and pull the handle to the left like this either. There you go. What if I just physically try to hit it higher in the air? Well, you've told me before that every time that you try to do that, you hit it great. You said, Joe, every time I try to hit it high, I just, I hit it. I hit, just I hit try it. to hit it high. What well, is that, that going to do? Let's see what you do. Don't tilt back to do it. You got an 11. It's 225 yards. And I said, you know, the only way to stop this ball is yep. to have it come in from the moon. And he goes, well, sit back there and hit it up in the air. It's the best form I ever hit on that ball. High. Straight, I almost won the hole. I have no problem with it, Pat. No. Zero. I know what you're saying about tipping back, but when will I know if I'm tipping back doing it? I'll hit it heavy? Yeah, you could. So if I don't hit it heavy, then I'm not too far. As long as you, as long as you hit it high by going forward and extending up and forward, you're fine. You don't tilt back to do it. Feel like your chest and your belt buckle extend up. Guys, would you agree that's money? That Pat, feels easy. Yeah. Pat, I'm, I'm, I've told, I told you three months ago, I'm, I'm fine with you hitting it up in the air. I love it. I have no problems See, with I'm that. I'm convinced that I can hit it up in the air even in that hard, that hard wind. I'm convinced I can do it. Well, no, you can. I can still hit, still hit it and just hit one more club and hit it. I know I can. But... So do me this favor. Set up. Let's do a variation of the drill where the arms stay on the body. And we stay, we stay in our angles after impact, right? 
but I want you to feel like your chest, your chin, your neck extend up like this. I want everything going up. Hit it way up in the air for me. Extension. Would you agree that's, just, that's a 10 out of 10? Yeah. Is that going to take left out? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely it will. Hit it in it higher. There's no such thing as a, as a uh, high duck hook, you right? Can't hit it. <laughs> well, let me explain why it does. Let me explain. Let me show you Okay, first and foremost is this, Pat. The less down we have... See, that's what I keep going back to. These, these trackman numbers, they're so this way. I'm thinking, I know I can shallow that out by just swinging this way. I know you can too. But, just but you know, we go forward, and I, I just continue to bring that in. But if I don't feel as forward, if I do what you said, like just getting this back to here, and then going up. That ex but, but, you're, but you're forward. You're extending forward. Okay, then I'm, I'm mistaking it how much forward. It's just your feels. Your feels are not keen on it yet, but that's fine. But what I'm saying is this. The less down, the less the path goes to the right of where you're aimed. Correct. Okay. That's why if you hit a driver level, there is no, there's no down, there's no out. So the first thing you're doing is, is by hitting it high, if you shallow the angle of attack, there's less down, which means there's less out in relation to your swing direction. That's first of all. And second of all, if I'm trying to hit it high, do you see how it's easy to maintain the loft on right, the club? That's the one thing I'm feeling too. Right. I'm feeling this face here, not... As opposed to down here, bam! You know, that look where you get this over here like that. I can feel the difference in the two. I can feel the face here, and I can also feel it there. He had the ball extremely back. Mm -hmm. He had the handle extremely forward. Uh, the shots always came out low, uh, sometimes a little stabby, uh, hitting a high soft. If, if someone were standing at that golf course and says, hey, Pat, pitch me one and let me catch it, he couldn't you know, throw one up in the air and let, and let somebody catch it. And we talked about the short game, and I feel that wrist cock can be the death of a short game scenario. Mm -hmm. And when I say short game, I mean, you know, 20, 30 yards and in. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is this. Wrist cock serves two major purposes in a golf swing. The first thing is it's a speed lever. Mm -hmm. it, it, it helps speed the club head up. Right. The second thing is it tends to steepen the angle of attack. It tends to. If you're hitting these little high soft pitch shots, we don't need speed because we've got it from momentum of the club head in our body. We don't need a speed lever. And we sure don't need to steepen the angle of attack. We don't need either. But also, like we, don't, okay, we, don't, we don't need to bring the leading edge into play as well. Right. So I had, I had Pat, if you guys would come take a look. So Pat, put the ball forward in your stance. Have the handle almost leaning backwards. Now just use the bottom of the club on the ground, the bottom of the club. Look at that. So what I have him feel like is the handle is can actually be back. Right. And I want him to feel like he puts the back of the bottom of the club mm -hmm. on the ground. Yeah, that's where Again, I've, I've had more shots. No leading this. edge whatsoever. I mean, look at that. Yeah. And he said that on uh, at, P at Pebble Beach on number five, the par three on Stillwater Cove. Yeah that he hit the ball to the left side of the green on the fringe, but he couldn't putt it because the green kind of runs in. Mm -hmm. So you tell the story. Oh, it was unbelievable. Shot Costas was standing right behind me over here. I'm right on the fringe. He's on the green. I'm, yeah, basically the green is right here, right here. And he goes to about that bush and straight away down to the hole. And I thought the higher I go, this thing's gonna be in the rough over there. I can't do it. So he got this up and I go, hey, watch this. I said, I'm gonna put this thing up here. I made this high little soft. It's going to let right there on the fringe and trickle down. You know, I put that thing right here. Right like that, exactly. Look at that. It trickled right down the hole to about there. Costco, that's one of the best shots I've ever seen. Because the fact is, you can hit it yeah. fat and hit it four feet. You can blade it and go in the, in the, in the water. <clears throat> yeah. Or you can hit what you hit. And I so, said, well, the, you know, so, this is, these are the shots I've been working on. I didn't have that shot five months ago. Well, this is pretty cool. Pull up two or three balls here. I want you guys to see this. So set up that. I want you to hit two inches behind this ball with the bottom of the club, two inches behind it. Okay. You would agree that the member would take that every time if he had a little 20 yard pitch shot. Do it again, please. Hit three inches behind it. Three inches behind it. Okay. The member would take that as well. The 20 capper will take that shot. Now put the ball back. 
lean the handle forward, way back, handle way forward, way forward. Now this is what's taught on how to chip the ball. And I hit two inches behind this one. Yeah. There you go. Right. So the point I'm making is this, is the ball forward, minimal shaft lean, if any, using the bottom of the club, you can hit three inches behind it. And that's where got shot on the so. And you've got a putt to save your par. Right. You put the ball back in the handle forward, you better be absolutely surgically perfect every single time. So we've hit, uh, so I've started to get some more in my game like this where I stand this up and the heel's almost off the ground. Correct. And it's more of a putting motion. Look at that. It's very hard to hit it on solid. Pat, pull, up, pull one right here, Pat. Put it for you. Now, guys, we know that under pressure, PJ Tour, remember PJ Tour, Mm -hmm. He can stand here and chip balls all night long with nothing on the line. He gets on the PJ Tour, you don't want to lay the sod over it. Now, if you look at his chipping technique, what I've done is, <coughs> excuse me, have him pick the handle up, which means he's standing closer to it. The shaft is more vertical. Yep. He's got his elbows out, and the reason his elbows are out is because it kind of widens the flat spot at the bottom as opposed to being more V-shaped. It's wider. Yep. More room for error. He's got the handle picked up, which means the stroke is more linear. Mm -hmm. Now, how in the world, hit one, Pat. Now, how in the world is a player of his caliber gonna lay the sod over with that technique? I've, I've started using more eight, nine, oh, God wedge, God. sand wedge, you know, like I told Joe, you know, my, I was always using a 60 degree wedge and having it back here to try and chip. Well, I'm taking that 60 with all that, all that wrist hit, it's basically turning into a you know, wedge or nine iron trying to hit these chips. I could never use another club to do it. Now all of a sudden, we start messing around with stuff, and you know, I can use an eight iron. I can I can use a, a pitching wedge from where I used to use a sixty degree because you know I can move it up here, and I mean even an eight iron. I mean I can put it here, and Look at that. chip that thing up in the air, and have it run if I needed to hit it twenty five yards. Yeah, with an eight iron. Yeah, you know yeah. even take like watch this shot here. Even from here to even from here, let's say to that that back little pin right there. Yeah, of course you can use a 60, but I mean with an 8 iron. Oh! How good is that? You know, I can also do the same thing. I, I didn't have those shots before. You know, you put me with the back, you know, ball back and hitting down with right. an 8 iron. Now I'm trying to chip with a 5 iron. Good luck. Right. And, and the thing is, right. right. and the thing about it is, guys, is this, and, and, and this is something that needs to be addressed. When you take a wedge, which is what all the amateurs do, they put the ball back and they cock their wrists. Mm -hmm. All that wrist cock got to come out. Right. And you've got, from the club head to the ball, what's that, about five feet? Mm -hmm. You've got five feet to get that wrist cock out of there, hope that you hit it solid, mm -hmm. hope that you can control the distance, whereas, in my opinion, you go down here and you take the 20 handicapper, you put the ball somewhat in the middle of the stance, somewhat orthodox, you get their shoulders out, and you make them make this motion. Right. Versus... And he's automatically a better See, chipper. I'm not kidding. And yeah. so, so back to that chipping stuff, that's where you know you take like this first pin right here at Pebble, that's where that's where that shot came into play. It was the no, it was just kind of a dead hand, you know, just a little shot like that? that. It's awesome. That lands right on the flat. I mean it's just there's so many different shots we've put in. But you would have played that last year, ball back, cocking oh, it up. With a with a sandwich trying to keep it low. Because I knew the wedge would actually go too far. But now, even, you know, I could even move the ball up now a little bit, hit a little higher. How about that? Yeah. I, this, I love that, actually. Yeah. And, Pat, take the 54 and hit some little chippy, pitchy shots, little high, soft ones here, keeping the ball forward with no wrist hinge. And basically what he's doing is he's just simply feeling a shoulder motion. And if he wants to hit it slightly higher, what he can do is he can throw the brakes on the handle, let the lead wrist go into extension sooner and kick the ball higher, or yeah. he can play a true loft shot and just simply keep the handle in line with the blade as he turns through. As a matter of fact, we're gonna demonstrate that now. Pat, hit this one and just keep the handle and the blade together. Now, how in the world, as I said, how is a player of his caliber going to screw that up? There's, there's, there's no, there's unlimited yeah. room for error. Now, same shot, but this time, let the lead wrist extend a little faster, put a little more kick on it. 
and it's higher. Wow. Yeah. And you'll notice there's going to be a little wrist cock because at a dress, there's an angle between the forearms and the shaft. So basically, that angle is the wrist cock. It's not that he's cocking it up. Right. And, 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 and when I see wrist cock in the short game, I cringe. <laughs> God knows I do. And, 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 you know, when I first showed him the shot, we were at TPC Scottsdale. Jerry Kelly was on the back of the range with us, who Jerry's great at this little shot. And I had described it to him, and he looked at me, and I, and I honestly thought he was going to call the sheriff and have me escorted off the range. I mean, it was like he was looking at me like, you're teaching me to flip the club. And I'm like, well. And then Jerry got in there. Whatever, whatever gets it done. And well, Jerry's sitting there from, you know. <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> Jerry's sitting there from 10 yards and, you know, standing up like this. And look at it, and his lead wrist, Jerry's lead wrist is like right, that. Right. Which is correct. And, 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 you know. And Jerry's always been a great I played with Jerry a lot in the you know, 13 years I've been out here. He's always been a great, wedge, you know. Chipper pitcher. Chipper pitcher, wedge, short game guy. And the thing about it is, is you know, <clears throat> Pat's template was off. Right. Pat, Pat's idea of short game was you got to have a flat left wrist. Yeah. You got to have shaft lean. You got to kind of hit down. You got to yeah, pinch left. the ball. Right. Yeah, you know, I was taught that I was taught that you had to, you know, get it left. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. get it left. I, I mean, it'll go low. <laughs> But that doesn't stop when you've got you know, this first pin here and you got a tree in the way. How's that going to happen? Exactly. So I just, I screw around all the time with just, you know, kind of standing here and kind of I, dead arm, hitting him up in the air. What was, kind of, what was kind of funny, I think it was that night or the next night we were at Pat's house and in, in his living room, he's got a putting green at, what is it, 15 feet, Pat? Yeah. 10 feet? Okay, whatever. And on the edge of the putting green, he has this kind of a thick rug. And in his house, with a window directly over here, he was like, wait a second. And he was chipping these high little soft pitches was, uh, with a window. Cool. I mean, it was cool. I was just to stand here and kind of... Look at that. Hit that little shot. But it, my story game has changed entirely since that day. And if you sit here and you watch him, this is the simplest motion known to mankind. And there is no way for a player with his talent to screw this up. Right, right. There's no wrist hinge, or, or there's minimal wrist hinge. Uh, the face is pretty much square. It's slightly tell you open. how many of these I hit. Oh, man. Did well, you see that? How many of those? I can't tell you how many yeah. times. You know how hard it is? Yeah. I don't want to say time it, but it's time. You, you got, it's wow. so hard to actually hit the right distance as opposed to just kind of stand here, even with like a little 54 and just get that little soft yeah. shot. And see, yeah. and see, Mike, I think you'll agree that when you put the ball back, the handle forward, and you're chopping down on this thing, you are delivering an inconsistent loft. Right. When he's kind of got a wider flat spot, you guys can see how the loft uh, is more easily deliverable. Yep. And if he can deliver the same or pretty much the same loft every time, then he can get used to a trajectory and he can get used to a distance. Right. I'm, so, I'm much more aggressive now than I used to be. I mean, this is a 52 degree wedge. You know, 52 degree wedge with 10, 10 feet to work with? Right. Downhill? I mean, I would, I, you'd be, be crazy. I would be crazy to use this before. Now put it, put it another inch forward. Now lean the handle backwards. Now use the bottom of the club. Look at this one, guys. Look at this one. If these are the type of shots that I screw around with. 52 degree wedge I would never use, but now I can actually put this into a tournament. Hopefully you got that one on camera. That's just gorgeous. Let's see, then that becomes my, yeah, that becomes my terrible one. Yeah. You know, I shut down a little bit. I mean, I can still make that. Yeah. Whereas the pose, the, the fat one in the bunker, the, the low, the low skipper that goes to the back of the green. Yeah. Because I don't know how far it was going to go. But, you know, a 52 degree wedge, I'm going to stand here and just kind of dead arm it. And for me, I've eliminated a lot of the bad stuff. Right. You know, I'm not going to make this every time, but I think I should be able to get it up and down, even with this club. Let's say the, well, I would use a long club. I would use this club. Yeah. What club would you use? I'd probably, you know, I'd either use 56 or possibly 60. Yeah. But, you know, I... Yeah. The thing is, you don't want to see and go, man. I hope I can. I hope I can hit the green from here. You know, it's funny because 
the uh, you know the old thing was that if you were increasing your margin of error it was also you know the the byproduct was maybe you couldn't be as precise and that's exactly not right here he's increasing his margin for error and he's more precise correct exactly he's getting the best of both worlds that was perfect man there it is i got the right result same strike just one was a little harder than the other you know so i it, but it's taken me it's taken me a little bit of time 60. and i do that every now and then because i still have a little of that this motion in it which shuts the face down just a touch yeah but that that's not your catastrophic like, no exactly uh, miss, right? that's not when it goes kapow right, right well and he told me uh i asked him and i and he told me point blank because when i said are you going to be able to put this in play and he said maybe not right away because i need now because guys think about this if you take away all this wrist caught that's a power source so now right. he had to relearn to calibrate how fast he needs to pivot through the shot to make the goal, ball go from A to B. Right. That's but, the but hard that's a, Yeah, but that's a benefit in the end because of that's easier to control than, than the hands, right? It sure. It just took me a little bit to actually figure out how much swing, how not mm -hmm. to. But wouldn't you agree speed. that it's easier oh, it's, to hit a firmer shot than it is to, it's, to it's, it's figure out nice. how soft to hit it? Now, it's Pat, nice day, put it? the ball off your right toe. I want to show you Put the ball off your right toe, lean the handle way forward. Now hit the same high soft quality shot. This <laughs> is hard. Exactly. How, how do you do it? You just see, but that's yeah. how I would hit though. That, I swear, right. God, that's how right. I used to chip and go. Man, right. I don't think I'm that bad of a chipper, <laughs> but I would. I would be. He had the ball back, the handle for the leading edge in the play. I want the ball for the handle back in the bottom of the club in play. Right. Mm. Uh, you know. These these great designers like Roger Cleveland and 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 Bob Mister you know Mister Vokey all these great designers mm -hmm. they put this balance into play and then these players remove it by right. having the right. ball right. back the handle forward I'm like well you have no bounce anymore right right I mean that's all night long hit some to the second flag pad so that would be by 56 right there it is. see now I used to be a, just one club inside 70 yards and now I can take it to where like this would be. Because I don't need to make as much of a swing. With a 56, I can just open up a little bit. Just make kind of a dead arm, dead arm swing. Got enough check. The motion just so, you know, for me, it's the strike. Am I going to get the same strike every time? And I am. That green's firm down there. I, I think you guys will agree at his level having the same strike has got it's got to be there yeah you can't be towing it and healing it and thinning it and, and then hit one in the center of the face and you can't have that not, i know not at what this to level. strike whether or not it's going to be the right distance i've gotten that part down i just have to find the distance every time because i've never used no arms no wrist cock yeah you know what i mean it's it's so different like that's not a very good shot it's 10 feet yeah it's makeable i mean it's not it's not great you wouldn't clap for it but it's Hit one to the second hole here, Pat, in front of us. That's acceptable there. Mm -hmm. What is that, 40 yards? 40 yards, we should really get within eight feet of that. The fortunate thing, by working on the swing stuff with Joe is I haven't had to chip as much. <laughs> so that's the one thing. I mean, I, I've drawn 15, 16 holes without the chip. I go, now what do I do? <laughs> see, like this little 56 to that one, this is kind of dead arm, just high. I mean, I know it's going to do that twice every time. Wow. And there are tournaments where that's weapon. Pebble, Pebble, Beach. Pebble Beach is a weapon. Pebble Beach is without question, because I can also do that with a nine iron. I can hit the same shot with a nine, which I love. It's the same shot every time. There's a nine iron. So I mean, I hit probably, I'd say a good six or seven of these at Pebble Beach. <coughs> Wind, soft green. So on those Poana greens, you can get it back there. Yeah. And make it stop without and going zip. And the best part, I just open that face a little more. And this hits that higher one. Oh, 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 oh. And then you can actually on Poana greens, it'll actually spin pretty cool. Mike, do you approve? 
That's awesome. The loft is what's cool about it too, because you can get it to kind of start out to the right. You, know, you can actually get it in any direction you want. But that's sort of a club. That's sort of a shot. Well, the other thing is too, like it, it, you're taking a lot of the, the the nervy part out of it too, Take because it you're already built in so many safeguards. Safeguards. With the engineering of the club. He's got the ball forward. He's using the bottom of the club. He's got a wider bottom. He's got minimal wrist cock. He's not pulling the handle down. I, and he's swinging firmer to get it done, which is easier to do than try and figure out how delicate you got to be. Right? Figure out how far, firm you got to be rather than how soft. It's taking, it's taking a lot of the power source out of it. Yeah, yeah. That's really what it is. When I, when, I, when I played, and on my best day, I was a four handicap. And I would get over a little chip or a pitch, and my pro would say, you know, you got to get that full wrist caught. And I would always say, how in the world am I supposed to hit a ball from here to there? Yeah, putting all got, that in When there. I got all that in there, <laughs> I, I wonder, how do I get that out of there? They wonder why people decelerate. Come take a look. Club path negative two, face angle plus one. Yeah, I don't like that, that seven, so why don't we do that now? We're going to. Right. I just have to waste any more time hitting them down like that. I'm getting older. I got only so many swings left. <laughs> After you wasted them. <laughs> hitting the ball steep. I want you to go to the top of your back swing and stop. Come down halfway. Pressure get going kind of halfway right there. Now here is where I want you to understand that when you are in this position, this is where we have to make a decision of what we're going to do. I want you to use your legs and your butt to push the handle up, up. In other words, the way to demonstrate it is this: if I'm going this way, when I get here, the pressure is in the front foot. The, the arms and the club are down. Now right here in the watch, I can stay down and take it right around the corner this way. That's what I do. Right, you do. Or I can think about pushing up and take the handle and use my legs and my butt to push the handle up. And you, what you'll feel, Pat, is you'll feel your butt go underneath you. Right. You see what I'm getting at? Yes. Hit one out there at about half speed, please. Not, not full speed just yet. And as your club is getting into the hitting area, feel like your legs push the handle upwards. Angle of attack, three degrees down, one swing. So you went from seven down to three degrees down in one swing. Go to the top, please. I'm gonna give you a little one-two thing. One is pushing forward and the handle coming down. Get the handle down, get the handle down. That's one and two is you pushing the belt underneath you, staying in your tilt, pushing your belt up. That's the two. In other words, one, two, one, two. That's it. Feel like you're pushing the club head up through the back of the ball. Push it up. Don't pull it down. I want it at four minimum. Four degrees down. There we go. Now, can you guys visually see a higher launch angle at a slower speed? So that's giving him a more optimal uh, launch angle. Well, what it's, it's, yeah, that's a great question. The first thing it's doing is he, he's, he will launch it higher. Yes, he will. But there's something else involved here. The more down the golf club is traveling through impact, mm -hmm. the more the path gets pushed to the right of where you're aimed. Okay. So if I can get him to shallow his hit, Right. He'll launch it higher because hitting down lowers a launch angle. It doesn't make you get it higher. That's a myth that we've heard. Right. The more he hits down, the lower he's going to launch it, but the more potential for wild curves. Okay. So I want to shadow that hit for a multitude of reasons. Push the handle and the club head up through the ball. Four degrees down, Pat. So you went from seven to four. So you took... Uh, he took almost 50% of his down away. 50% of seven is 3.5. So he took 40% 40, 40 of his down out already. We've got 
we've got a situation where he's going to launch it higher mm -hmm. and the potential for wild curves are reduced. Right. You know something else, Mike, that I've noticed, and this has been confirmed, shaft changes can change attack angle. For, I've seen a different shaft change the attack angle four degrees. Mm -hmm. Different kicks through the ball, mm -hmm. plus different feels, so the player loads it differently. Right. There's several reasons that that can occur. Right. Push up, up. Four degrees down. Well, because it not only flex, it flexes back, you've also got droop, right? Of course you do. Of course you do. First of all, players say, I want to make sure my alignment's perfect. Well, in my opinion, there's no such thing. Trying to align your shoulders and your feet and your club face at a target 250 yards away is futile. Mm -hmm. We we can't line our putters up from 10 feet. That's factual. Right. How are we going to line up a face and, and, and this mythical... <laughs> right. Uh, it, it, yeah. I, it's absurdity. All we can do is have a general idea of what's going on. Right. But I do believe that proprioceptively, let's say a player has rightward aim, shoulders left. I mean, this is an exaggeration. Yeah. Now, the shoulders are out there somewhere in space. The feet are over there somewhere in space. But once he takes that address position, the proprioceptors in his body know where there is. Right. And I think it, 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 it precipitates a, a leftward swing direction is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. So, Pat, I want you to set up. And just about when you're ready to pull the trigger, ball forward to hit it way high. All right, drop the club down. Don't move a muscle. You can clearly see his shoulders get slightly left, his feet are slightly right. Now, I'm not saying that he has to have everything because Matt Kuchar aims his feet nine cornfields to the right, his shoulders are left, he pulls the ball back on line. And he's won a lot more playing golf than I'll ever win. What I'm saying is I think, set up again, Pat? I think proprioceptively, if Pat keeps the ball really forward and starts with the shoulder slightly to the right, at a, at a dress right before he pulls the trigger, I think proprioceptively it will help him to not return the shoulder so far to the left. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that has merit. I think it does. So, Pat, when you get the ball really forward hitting a shot toward Mike and Terry, when you get the ball really forward, don't let the shoulders go left. You have to make sure that the shoulders stay to the right. Do that for me. Ball really forward. Where are the shoulders pointed, Mike? More rightward now? Yeah, they're better. All right, keep the loft facing the sky. You will not start the ball well. Okay, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, you hear now, it also is going to give me more of this. It's very hard to stand here like this and then go, all right, well, you know. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, that's out. keep it the sky. That's you know out. I mean? But I know how much harder it is with the shoulders left. Yes. As I said, I don't think it's I don't think it's the alignment. I think it's the proprioception of where the alignment is that gives us the problems. Farther forward with the ball. Now make sure the shoulders are pointed to the right. Now push forward. Where'd the ball start? Right, right. Good shot. Yeah. All right. Now this is not too high going through. Oh. Everybody talks about, you know, you want it over here. No, no, no. no stop. Way left and all oh, that stop, action. Stop, stop. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, the other thing is, too, if you if you really get your head out of that part of it and just look at the ball flight you just hit, what would you care about anything yeah, when you're seeing Joe. that in the sky? I told Joe before I used to what you work on. I said, well, I'm trying to get as far left as possible over here. I'm working on track man. I said, I'm working on for six months, you know. Get it over here. I said, I can get over there. <laughs> sure. I didn't see any good shots, but I was over there. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So, so the attention needs to be up there. If that's if the ball is telling you that, you know, the ball tells you it's great. An impact tells you it's great. Yeah. So if I love that fly. That's how we were doing last time we were here. Yep. In those big high launching drivers. Let's get back. Let's, let's get back into this thing. Now aim your shoulder slightly to the right. Now point the loft to the clouds. Now why would you do anything else? That's right. Why would you do anything else? Exactly. Than that? That's all day. How many times? Ask him. How many times I've stood on the range and asked him, why would you do anything else? See, Pat, 
there, if you hit it like that, there, you don't need any other shot. No. <laughs> you that's just Jack, point Jack it. Nicholas. You just point it, right? Uh, the so height of and all that stuff is just pointless. Right. I think, I think it's just a matter of, of uh, just doing it so much that there's no other there's no other way, way. Uh, other way to do it yeah, in your like mind. The other way I you know, to. it's just repetition but, and, and deciding that this is how it's done. Right. And, and and his defense as a player, my defense as an instructor, I'm trying to get it past 12 years. Mm-hmm. I've had him for five months. This other stuff's 12 years. Yeah. You know, five months versus 144 months. Right. You know, I'm a 30 to 100 dog right now. <laughs> All right, ball forward, shoulders to the right. Now point the loft to the clouds. Don't roll it over. That's nuked. Why would you do anything else? That's a 280-yard tree wood. Yeah. And that, and again, it, remember we talked this morning, we were saying the engineer has put a specific loft and a specific Correct. everything. Correct. You, you do do deliver the club the way it was designed to be delivered, Correct. right? This is 14 to 15 degrees right now. Yeah. But hit correctly, it should have that high rainbow. Correct. Correct. Most people don't have the ball speed to make it apex like that, to make it to make it apex as it's going, it's, you know, pushing through the air at 100 and probably 65, 160 miles an hour. Push forward off that right foot. You have to do that on Sunday, Pat. You just, you just have to do it. Right and you'll notice here how your belt buckle is forward and it's up. Your spine is an extension versus you down here twisting, 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 and the right foot kicking up on the toe. I cannot have that anymore. I want, Pat, watch my right foot and knee. I want you to push forward and then watch and then push up. Look at what my right knee and foot are doing. They are not backing up and caving in. It's rolling over and going up. Do you see that? Yeah. Over and up, not spinning. All right, let's go back to slow motion, please. And I need you to feel the arms coming down as the pressure is being pushed over there. You notice how you can really start the ball to the right and draw it. Feel the pressure pushing Because I think you'll agree, Pat, you can now start the ball considerably right and still draw it because now you can get the path outside of the face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Show me the slow motion pump three times. Get the arms down. There you go. And one last time. It's not necessarily the head moving forward. It's just the head not moving back. You feel that? Well, yeah. For me, it feels like a good... Right. And for you, that's a good feeling. I just want to clarify that it's not your head actually moving forward. No, it never goes forward anyway. All right. Push off the right foot. How good is that? Uh, I can feel the... I can feel the foot. Yes. And for this, Pat, I mean, I'm really... I'm... You know, people are going to say, well, what the hell does the right foot have to do with it? I'm a big believer that the right foot is a strong indicator of what that pelvis is doing. And if I had the pelvis going the farthest forward, my right foot would clearly bank the most. And if I had my pelvis rotating the soonest, my right foot would clearly spin. And I just, I, 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 I want that right foot better for you because I want you to push this way and then up. You see that long right leg that we talked about? I don't want it doing this. I cannot have that. Because it's an indicator of what your pelvis is doing. So push this way. That's just fantastic. Now you notice his right foot now. It's banking over and then angling. Banking over and angling. Let that right foot bank over, not spin. Oh yeah, look at that. You started that ball 10, 12 yards it's to the right. draw that one. It's going 110 yards. Exactly. Exactly. And, and right now, when I'm drilling Pat, I want him to hit big overdraws. Mm-hmm. The reason being is because he's never been able to, to functionally draw the ball, almost never. And if I can get him to start the ball excessively to the right and still draw it, that means we're getting out of that mm-hmm. pulling the handle to the left. Feel it in the inside edge of that foot. Push this way. 
Look at that. Do that again, please. Pull the ball. On the count of three, I want you to get the arms down to the ground, parallel to the ground, and push forward and stop. One, two, three. You feel that? Mm -hmm. Now, how in the world can you have a pelvis going forward and up and pull the handle to the left? How are you going to do that? I would say it's impossible. But... Right. But if that pelvis does this, if it starts backing up and spinning, <laughs> that handle can easily go to the left. Yeah, it's falling up. Exactly. So again, please. I'm on the ground. You're not going to hit me. Slow motion backswing, please. Slow motion. Now push. You feel that? Mm -hmm. Now keep going. Now let it just come up. There you go. I never want the knee in ever spinning again. Never. Make that right foot roll over as it pushes forward. There you go. There you go, Pat. There you go. And what, what the viewer needs to understand is, is that Pat is drawing this ball not from some type of a loading up, releasing, rotating nonsense. That's not what's happening. What you're doing is at the moment of impact, you've got that face some amount to the right of the target to start it there. And because you've got a nice linear motion of the pelvis and the handle slightly up, that's getting the path to the right of that face, allowing that ball to draw. So now that you know that, you would know that if you wanted to draw the ball more, you wouldn't rotate or release. No. You would get even farther forward to push the path farther to the right to draw it even more. You see what I'm saying? Correct. All right. So Pat, can, Pat eventually will learn to curve the ball with his pelvis motion. Look at that one. That's a 15 yards right. Exactly. What's that like? Exactly. Exactly. And under pressure, you have to do this. Here, this is, the, this is the sensation that I want. Of course, the hips are opening and all that jazz. But I want you to feel this, the right foot pushing that belt buckle toward the flag. Get the arms down as the pressure pushes forward. How good is that? Nice. The reason that I want you to slow motion this drill is not just to feel the pressure, but for the arms to come down with the pressure. Because listen to this, one of your biggest issues was the arms pulling down, overloading this angle, tilting back. You see how my arms are not coming, they're, they're coming down, but not sequentially. Should I almost feel you know, you hear about a cast and all that. Do I feel like it does this or no? Should is you that, feel it? Is that going to help me? Is this going to help me do anything? I'm trying to feel more of this width as opposed to... Well, in, in my opinion, it will for the simple fact that nobody at your level is going to feel a cast and tilt back at the same time. No one's going to do that. No, because you hit it here. You hit a foot behind it. Yeah. Right. But this is this is dangerous territory. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's it's dangerous. Before I try it, but not but, try it. But let's think about this. Instead of thinking about casting, let's look at the root cause of why the wrist get overloaded to the start to begin with. It's the spine tilting back and pulling down. If we feel the pressure move forward this way and the spine reconcile itself, shouldn't have to do that. Then we're not pulling down anymore. No. Basically, the idea of of passive. Uh, approach to the hands where what's what's going to make the hands do the right thing is your pivot correct it's just going to you know you forcing something to this happen is, up this, here this is uh this is dangerous territory let's eliminate let's eliminate the disease let's don't treat the symptom so pat a couple more times in slow motion feel the arms come down with the pressure being pushed you sense that i do now how in the world are you going to start that ball left and pull hook it you just can't do it. Do it. You just can't do it. Joe, re regarding the hands, George Newton said the word "let" was the most it was the most important sure. uh, word in golf. Sure, you know sure. you're letting something happen, in sure, as opposed to forcing that, that. I want his hand path, and make no mistake about it, guys. You know, three dimensional measuring has taught us that the hand path is so critically important. How is he going to think about his hand path at 117 miles an hour at Bay Hill? Or, right. at, or at Hilton Head next week trying to win the tournament and he's right. thinking about his hand path. That's absurd. Right. 
The hand path needs to be a byproduct of proper motion using the ground proper pivot. That's why when he talked about this, that I kind of got nervous. <laughs> well, not nervous. It's just you have, to be, you have to be careful what you say to these guys. They're, 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 he's got to play for a living. Well, and and he can do anything. He can like, do anything. That, so, so that makes a difference, That's you know. Right. Oh, here we go, Pat. Uh, hit it out there about 80 yards, 100 yards. But here's the key, Pat. When you push, feel the arms come down, not tilt and pull. All right. And you are on. Superb. Now, what did the ball do? Put my extra hole a now, let's, now, let's take a look at everybody crowding and look at this. Now, you notice your head position in the full swing. You had that just a little tilty stuff. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Watch this. Look at that. Now we're in business. The spine has a tilt to it, but because the hips are moving forward correctly as the right foot is pushing the pressure, not because your head is tilting back. Look at that. That is just good. Look how stable that is. Now, I want you, Pat, to look very carefully at your left elbow. What do you see? Yeah, it's closer. It's straight, it's straight as an elbow. It's, it's straight as an arrow. It's yeah. not flexed. Because look at how your butt is underneath you. Look at how that right foot is banking over. Let's go back here. Let's go back here to literally 20, 30 minutes ago, and let's have a go. Watch your right foot. There, it's, it's spinning, and now watch so this. this way. Uh -huh, and look here, look here. You need to see something. Now, this is a big deal. Do you see how your your head has the appearance of tilting back and kind of looks like this? Exactly. Your neck, your neck tilt is kind of weird. Your eye line is kind of weird. And I'm a big believer of what the eye see, the balance system in the head. That, that's a big deal. Not going to get into it right now, but what I want you to see is this. Watch that head go back, 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 back. Now watch the left elbow right after impact now. Left elbow is flexed 10, 15 degrees because when you start moving back as the camera clicks, 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 you have the appearance of being forward, but in reality you're not. You're sacrificing the integrity of your low point. So how are you going to shadow the glove pad? Right there. So remember what I said. As the pressure pushes forward, the arms come down sequentially. Not this. Remember the feeling where we felt like we had no wrist cock at the top? Yeah. Let's have the feeling of no wrist hinge. Right foot pushes forward, pushing up. Let's see it. I want you to feel stick man arms to the max. Two degrees down. So guys, th this is a point that, that I really want to get across on this video. And I have seen this across the board. I've been on the PJ Tour full time now for a little over three years. And, and I have seen this so many times. Um, it's an epidemic on the PJ Tour. We've heard about this lag and wrist cock and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm here to tell you right now, I have seen so many tour players who overload these wrist angles. They pull this thing down to the ground. You see their head start backing up, and then watch what happens. The handle gets so darn forward, and that has been taught for the last 50 years as utopia. It's the secret to great golf. And I'm here to tell you right now, it's not even close. I have seen it ruin people, and I'm not going to stand here and start mentioning names, but all you guys, all I got to do is look at driving statistics and, statistics, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And, and just for the viewers watching this, I had Pat feel as though he was a stick man, no wrist cock, and just coming through like this. Mm -hmm. He hit that ball 96 miles an hour. His full swing's 105, 107. Yeah. He hit that ball 96 miles an hour, which which tells us that he didn't lose much power at all. Right. And he's feeling like a stick man with, with, with stick arms. Mm -hmm. His attack angle went to two degrees down. Right. And he launched, guys, he launched that in the air, way up in the air.
Right. So the point of the conversation is, you know, we, we see the amateur, we see the member, John Q. member, throwing away his wrist angles like this. Right. And we tell people that this right here is the secret to golf. Far from it. Because he is living proof of what overloading these wrist angles and getting the handle too far forward can do to your golf swing. Right. Right. And Pat, you, you can tell the camera right now, you have the ability to hit shots off the earth before I met you when you overload those wrist angles. And see, I think that's what happens on those crunch times because it gets yes. here and then obviously it's going it's, down that way. It's just all over the place. When he first showed me this, yeah, it was like, you tell me somebody's walked on Pluto. <laughs> I'd never heard it, obviously. I'd right. never even, it was, it was a secret to me. You know, no yeah. one ever told me that somebody walked on Pluto. It's the last thing I would have ever thought of. That's death. Was this. So the first thing, you know, we worked on, he said, go from here to the ball. And I noticed it right away. I go, God, hell, is nobody ever explained this. No one's ever told me that. It's a phase. The, the driver, he showed me, the driver was like this. Yeah. And how are you going to hit it from and there? How are you supposed to hit it in the air from there? I right. said, well, I'll, I'll fall back, and then I can flip. You know, there's holes at Bay Hill where you have to be able to challenge, you know, the trouble. Number 11 is a, is a prime example. You, you've got to hit You've got to hit three wood down because you can't have five under that green. No. So you've got to be able to hit three wood, start it off that bunker into a left to right wind with the water on the left. You hit in the bunker, you're dead. In the water, obviously, you're bogey. Um, and I was able to do it each day with that stick man thinking. Start off that bunker and draw it in, and it's a wonderful feeling. But you know, my main concern here is these, is that uh, that you know not being steep. And exactly. I know it comes from like you've said it forever here. Sure. It's the only way it's going to do. It's never going to get shallow from there never it can't it can't cannot and the thing is too is that the look of a lot of this is actually just just happening because you're doing a good pivot yeah. so uh, like a, a, you can't in transition those angles you can't help but have them deepen because there's inertia in the club head going there's the inertia. other way right. a dynamic loading taking place yeah you're absolutely right so you can't stop it no. so feel no hinge push forward and up Exactly. You know, and Pat, I cannot impress upon you enough the importance of, of you doing this because anything that we can do to stop that, we're in the ball game. I oh, yeah, I know. Push forward and then push up. Exactly. We did a, a, a video, we, we called it the grand illusion about lag. Oh, yes. And talking about that, uh, the uh, uh, how shallow the cut club is coming in affects your perception of what the lag there actually is. Correct. And that the whole idea of trying to track it is a little bit self-defeating. Yes. So there's Hogan. There's his arm, and there's that club shaft. Well, guess what? That club shaft is laid off right now, and that angle is not very deep. That angle is more like that. That's almost a 90 degree. Yeah. So the thing is your perspective, and this is why when you're getting your, your video analysis done and everything else like that, you've got to be very aware of what... You when know, they say that you're, you know, look at you're about a 160 or whatever, and in reality, you're not. It's telling you more about the plane you're swinging on than it's telling you about something like lag. Okay? You can look at someone with no lag, okay? Here's 90 degrees, that's just a basic wrist hinge. And you look at that, and you look at that on the right angle, laid off, and you've got uh, 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 the impression that this is someone who's got an enormous angle created. There's no enormous angle. You've got, a, you've got an illusion. We've heard shaft lean, handle lean, we've heard flat left wrist. Right. But what the instructor needs to understand is even though a camera or a video may give this appearance, right. this wrist angle is going from a flexion position yes. to an extension position, yeah. and it's getting there quickly. Right, right. So even though the tour player looks like he, you know, we've heard that turn it down, right. bow it, supinate right. prone it, we've heard all that. Right, right. And it gives that appearance. Right. But as I know you know, Mike, that wrist angle is coming out. It is going rapidly into extension. That's what's occurring. Yeah, so you're, you're, see, you're capturing a, a, 
a, a moment, a in, moment time. in time and right. a, 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 posi- a position that you're flowing through. Right, and cameras will show this lagging, bowing, pronating, supinating. They'll show that, but a three-dimensional wrist graft is showing that it's coming out, and it's coming out rapidly. And I'll take it a step further. In my opinion, trying to, uh, trying to coach someone to, to maintain that can mm-hmm. be very detrimental. Mm-hmm. There might be a time and a place for that when you're trying to get something specifically accomplished. Yeah, hit a knockdown shot. Exactly. But the instructor needs to understand that's what's happening. Right. Absolutely. There it is. So the ball starting to the right? Right. Ball's drawing. And Pat, one thing that I want you to remember what we talked about. Remember, the face is going to determine primarily where this ball is going to start. It's not club half. So with that eight iron, that club face is responsible for, let's say, 75% of where that ball starts. And the one thing that uh, still amazes me is if we agree that the club face determines where the ball starts primarily, and I know that you and I agree that a draw has to start to the right of the target, then that means by definition we agree that the club face has to be to the right of the targeted impact to draw the ball. Yes. Well, if we agree on that, then tell me why people are still told to do this to draw the ball. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. If we agree the face has to be there to draw it, then why are we being told to do this to draw it or to stop a slice? It okay. makes, makes no sense at all. If we talk about the ball flight laws, remember what I said previously, that the ball is going to start primarily where the face is pointed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's say that it impact Pat's club face is two degrees to the right of the target. Yeah. The ball is going to start to the right. Yeah. And to make the ball curve back to the left, he needs to have the path more than two degrees to the right. Let's say three or four degrees to the right. Right. Well, when the shaft is coming down very steeply the way Pat's shaft used to do, and he would also tilt back, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how are we going to get the path out there four or five degrees to the right of the target line right get it right of that club face to make it draw he couldn't do it mm-hmm. so when i first met pat if he had the face three degrees to the right at impact yeah there was no way to get that club path four or five degrees to the right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. shaft coming down too steeply right. whipping around to the left and he would push cut the ball right and a player of his caliber is not going to stand there and push cut the ball right. uh, all around long. He's going to do something instinctually to stop that from happening. Right. Which was right. get the face left of the target line. Yeah. Well, I think I think shallow divots and the the, the miss, uh, if it happens, being a thin shot rather than pork chops and fat is is a way better way to play. Well, I would rather see him keep your steepness, Pat. I mean, that's just. That's perfect. That's perfect. And uh, I would rather see Pat thin a seven iron one sixty five than fat one sixty five. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that that's an interesting. Um, it's interesting that you uh, talked about the seven iron. When I played years ago, um, that's the one thing that I realized that whether I hit a seven, it's the only club in the bag, the seven iron. You hit it on the button. Or you hit it thin, it goes exactly the same distance. So <laughs> when amazing. I when I qualified uh, for the Ontario match play, I had to play a golf course I hadn't played before, <clears throat> and off the tee I clubbed so I had to have a seven iron into every hole, and I just made sure I, I didn't fat anything. Yeah, if, if you get the swing bottom forward and you don't fat it. Yeah, exactly. It make it makes it so easy to play. But right. the seven iron is a magic club for that. If you if you have a real pressure shot that really matters. Get off the tee and, and get, the seven, get, get, out, get the seven iron into your hand. You'll never screw it up. That's a great point. Steepen this in your shoulder turn. So, Pat, I want to talk about how we're going to sequence your golf swing better. And we hear weight shift a lot. Uh, the truth and the reality of it is, is that the weight, the center of mass of a golfer shifts very little. Uh, it shifts minimally. Your center of mass is somewhere inside your abdomen. And even a player like Curtis Strange or Rocco Mediate, who really look like they're moving around, their center of mass is shifting negligibly. What's happening is, is a shift of pressure. Pressure. When you watch, uh, when you watch uh, uh, Usain Bolt in the blocks getting ready to go, his weight is obviously forward. Pow, 
pow, the gun goes off. The pressure is back here. The weight's forward, the pressure's back here. So what, we're, what you're sensing in a golf swing, uh, and we've measured this, so once again, we know this is true. Uh, it's not just something I'm throwing against the wall. When a tour player is, is his backstroke is commencing for various reasons that I'm not gonna go into, the pressure is building under the right foot. And the way I look at it is this, is if I had a bathroom scale under your right foot and a bathroom scale under your left foot, I want you to get the sensation that the bathroom scale under the right foot is going up, 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 up. It's pressure. It's not that you physically move over there. It's pressure builds under the right foot. But here's the key for you. Listen very carefully to this. I want you to use the ground to move that pressure. And what I mean by that is this. Golf shoes have got spikes in them for a reason. And a lot of people could play golf without spikes because they don't use the ground effectively. When you get to the top of your backswing, I want you to use your right foot to push that pressure to the left foot. You physically push off the ground. That's the fitting that I want you to have. And we're gonna work on a few drills here and I want you to have two thoughts. I want you to take your seven and I want you to go to the top of your backswing and in slow motion, I want you to pump the club down. I call it the pump drill. And in slow motion, I want you to feel the right foot push the pressure into the left leg, left knee, left ankle, left foot, as the arms are coming down. And there's a byproduct of doing this, especially with driver and three wood under pressure, Pat. How many times have you seen yourself do this? Too many. Okay. Watch me now. I'm not tilting back, look. <clears throat> what I'm doing is, this is the way I like to term it. It's not what's really happening, but what I'm trying to do is I want you to feel like your spine is returning to vertical. It's not what's really happening, but I don't want you to feel the tilt. There is axis tilt in good golf swings. The problem is, Pat, you get your axis tilt from tilting back and pulling not from the hips and the pressure pushing forward. So for you specifically, when you come down from the top of your backswing, I want you to feel the right foot push the pressure to the left foot, but watch this. You see how my spine is almost vertical again? Mm -hmm. I call it reconciling the spine. I want you to reconcile your spine. I don't want you back here tilting away from the target. Go to the top of your backswing. Now in slow motion, do you feel how there's pressure in that right leg, right foot? You feel the pressure yeah. into the ground? Okay. Like a speed skater, I want you to push the pressure this way. And as you do that, I want your arms to come down sequentially here. Do that for me a few times in slow motion. Go to the top and stop. Now, arms come down as the pressure goes forward. Right there. Bingo. Now, I want you to notice something, Pat. You notice how your tailbone is farther forward? Yes. You notice how you're not back here all tilty? Yeah. Because, go to the top please. Under pressure, your hips go forward and then they start to break off and spin this way. The right knee kicks in up on its toe. Remember, that's what our trainer was talking about, yeah, that exactly. big heel. Yeah. Right. So here's what I want from you. I want the appearance of the hips moving more laterally and the right foot having more of a rolling over motion as opposed to the hips spinning, the knee caving in, going up on the toe. Because when that knee kicks in, when that knee kicks in and those hips start to spin, it's very easy for you to go which is what we're trying not to do. Correct. You got it? Yep. So for the first few minutes of the drill, here's what we're gonna do. Go to the top. In slow motion, you're gonna push, get the club down a couple of times, and then I want you to hit one out there about 80 yards, I want you to punch it out there, and I want you to sequence the pressure being pushed and the arms coming down. Pump it down a couple of times, slow motion. You feel that? Mm -hmm. You feel the pressure being pushed? Now punch one out there and replicate that feeling. Beautiful. And you're gonna get the sensation, Pat, that your belt buckle is being more forward, more forward and up 
as opposed to forward, forward, down and around, down and around, down and around. Okay? Okay. And a great feeling for you is to use the inside edge of that yeah, shoe right there to push that way. Is that where that wedge thing came in with it? People had a wedge and they would stand yeah, on like that. I think that's more of what they were trying to do is trying to stabilize the knee in the backswing, which I don't want to stabilize the knee. I want your knee to lose flex, and it does. Your right knee works perfectly in the backstroke. Pump it down a few times slowly, slowly. Get the arms down a little sooner, a little better sequencing. Now hit one out there a hundred yards and replicate the feeling. Push off the right, push forward. There you go. All right, this time I don't want the finish up here. I want the finish pointed here. I want the arm straight at that mirror. Right foot banking, arms dead straight, please. Ball starting to the right. Starting there. Do it again. All right, look at the mirror. Look down there. Now point the club dead at the mirror and hold your finish. Would you agree that's money? Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to add a little something in here just as a visual. I want you to try to cut me a straight divot. Cut me a divot that faces the mirror. See how your divots are to the left? Which is correct. The divot should be to the left. Try to cut me a divot straight at that mirror. Dead straight at it. Arm straight, right foot banking, a straight divot. Again, please. I'm trying to get him to sense a slightly less leftward swing direction. There it is. Tell me where the divot's pointed, Pat. A little left. A little left, okay. So, you agree the ball started to the right and the ball drew and the divot's to the left? Yeah. Okay. Club is moving down and out. Out. Until it gets to low point. Divot's low point. So when you're hitting the ball, the club is still moving down and out. Ball's gone. There goes the divot. You understand where I'm coming from? That's yeah. how you can have a leftward divot and still draw the ball. Right. Okay. As long as we're clear on that. Do it again, please. I want you to associate the divot on the ground. I don't want you to cut a drastically leftward divot. Cut straighter divots for me. How was that one? Straighter. Okay, good. good. This is where I'm going with this. I'm trying to be non-technical here. I'm trying to be completely feel-oriented. When you're, when you're dealing with a player of his caliber, in my opinion, if he can sit here and watch the divot fly and watch how the, it's cutting, his brain, he will instinctually figure out how to cut that divot at a different angle. I mean, that's, that, that's why he has the gift to play golf at this level. And I believe that he can stand here and cut divots at I think he can cut a rightward divot if he wants to. I know he can. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get him to feel the rightward swing direction instead of me explaining on a technical level how, it's, how it occurs. Ball draws perfectly. Mike, let me ask you a question. How do you feel about where the athlete pushes the pressure to. See, I'm a big believer. We know the pressure pushes from right to left. But if I push the pressure to the ball of the left foot with the left knee flexing, that sets up a draw scenario. If I push the pressure to the, the heel of the left foot, mm -hmm. that set, sets up a cut mm -hmm. type motion. I'm a big believer in that. What I do with the lead foot is I kind of turn it into the ground like this, yep. and when I land on it, I'm landing almost At an flat angle. on it like this. Yeah. So it's it's not spinning out. It's it's not just sliding. But there's this path, this resistance in the ground. So when I when I move from say the inside, yeah, okay, to flat on on it and then sure over. What you're doing, Pat, is you're moving slightly diagonally for a split second in time versus where it's back here exactly and for someone who has trouble with their swing direction going to the right oftentimes and we measure this with the swing catalyst force plates i want you to push the pressure 
diagonally, this is an exaggeration, yeah. into the, and look how my knee is tracking over the toe, and then we can push and explode through the shot. Does that make sense to you? That feels, uh, automatically it feels more explosive. Right, because watch this, Pat. We, we jump off the balls of our feet. We don't jump off of our heels, first of all. Right. But thinking about this as a, as a feel, you know, obviously I want my swing direction to the right to help me draw it. It's hard to do when you're here. Exactly, so if I push my pressure diagonally this way, look at, see how my hips want to stay closed a split second? Mm -hmm. That helps everything go to the right. Let's do that. Hit one out there at half speed and feel the right foot push the pressure toward the ball of the left foot diagonally. How'd that feel to you? Better. Do it again, please. I also can feel the up. Yes. You can't jump off your heel. No. Especially when it's spinning. It's spinning this way. Oh, no, 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 that's no bueno. That's just, that's that fucking that's negative swing I direction. I gotta get it, we gotta get it out of there. Turn that left foot out. Can I go to the top, please? Mm -hmm. All the way. Now show me how the pressure pushes diagonally this way. There you go. You see how you're not around to the left too soon? Yeah. All right. Diagonally. That is absolutely perfect. All right, Pat, don't move a muscle. Go to the top, please. Now, I want you to push the pressure slightly diagonally into right there and feel that left knee track that way. I don't want the pressure going back there. I want it to go right there, diagonally to the right. Do that for me. Let that rightward swing direction happen. And the ball draws beautifully. Beautiful, Pat. I definitely feel more over here. Yes. I'm not, I'm not standing there like this. Yes, because watch what happens. When I push that pressure diagonally and my knee flexes, my pelvis can continue to go forward and up. When I push that pressure to the, the, uh, the heel and that left knee straightens, that's when the hips start backing up and spinning. Looking back at it, you know, after learning everything I have from Joe, I know why I never played well, you know, and, and so when I had a good run there on the West Coast this year, you know, I had four top 11s and, and they said, you know, what's your difference on the weekend of being able to play better? And I said, well, for one, I understand what the ball flight was. I, I know, I know what creates what now. And I said, I know what I'm doing. I said, when I had, when I was ever near a lead or whatever it was, let's say my timing was right for a couple days here and there and I got in the lead, well, when I got to Sunday afternoon on the back nine, it would fall apart because the stuff that needed to be there wasn't there. Yeah. You know, you get faster, adrenaline's pumping, you know, I'm fast anyway. Yeah. So the timing just goes out the window and I never had it. So come down the stretch on, you know, like Tori. Tori is just like a US Open course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. playing that back nine, it's as hard a back nine as you're gonna find on the tour. And I was able to get myself in position to win that tournament. Right. You know, if I make the putt on 17, you know, you're going to play off, who knows? But it was just nice, even though I lost the tournament, it was so nice to be there again. Right. And then actually have the info and, and the technique to be able to stay in the game the whole time. Well, Pat, well, a shot that the viewers would probably like to hear is talk about the shot that you hit on number seven at Pebble this year on Sunday. The, the little wedge that we did where, you know, you people couldn't get it back there because they were spinning it too much, but yet you were able or to knock it. the green, yeah. yeah. So number seven this year at Pebble was, was blown into our face. It's only 102 yards, and the wind was blowing easily 20, 25 off that. And obviously you're hitting downhill. You know, it's a 7% <laughs> downhill to a small little green. You know, everyone thinks it's so easy. But I, you know, Ryan Palmer, I played with him. He hit it back in the hazard. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know who else. Uh, but, you know, I know there weren't a lot of close shots. And me and Joe had worked on, at Torrey, hitting little eight irons about 100 yards, doing these drills that we were doing. And we got the pebble, and I said, you know, H, I said, these are going to be some of the shots we need, because one, the greens are real soft. Yeah. So in that poana will spin off the plant. So you need these shots. And I had never hit more shots in a week from 100, 100 to 120 yards with anywhere up to a six iron. Yeah. And it was just very simple. So I got on this hole and I said, hey, it's 102 yards. I said, if I can hit this like we were doing at Torrey, if I can hit this eight iron 80 yards, no matter whatever the conditions are, I know if I can just 
hit this little straight arm shot and it flies 80 yards, it's gonna be perfect. And it was dead pin high, hit this late arm, it was dead pin high, about eight feet, and I rolled in for two. And that would have been a rare two on that day. Right. If you hit it high and spin it off that point, there it comes, or you hit right. it deep, it's off, in, off the and back of the thing. that's the, the difference of, you know, finally knowing what I was supposed to do, because, you know, normally I'd get on that, okay, well, let's hit a light arm. I'd put it way back, hit right. down on it. Right, right. Well, now I've turned the eight into a five. Right, right. Low, low, right. low. And it may hit the green, but it's going to go long. Right, right. This was just one of these little, you know, little dead-handed, you know, kind of high just like that, yeah, 80 yeah. yards. Yeah, yeah. And hitting the green, it had enough check on it into the wind because it kept spinning. Right. And it stopped perfect. Right. And it was just amazing. To, I, I've been amazed a lot in the last five months. Not the fact that I'm just playing better. I mean, I'm playing I'm playing better. I haven't won anything yet. You know, we're, we're, that's all coming. I haven't, you know, had all top five finishes. But I'm seeing shots that I've never hit in tournament play before. Right, right. And not by chance. Right. Actually right. having a plan in mind to do it and watch it go and do what we want. Yeah, well, it takes some guts to do something that... Oh, let me uh, tell you. That's that unfamiliar. Yeah, yeah. Very unfamiliar. Now you got all this money on the line, and, you know, not only that, you know, I don't have win status, so I haven't... I've got to... The number one thing is obviously... You know, every year you want to keep your job. Okay, sure. That's one. Two, you want to win. Everybody wants to win. Right. Okay, but you can't win if you're not on tour. Right. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, 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 that's, that's my thing. excuse. I, I'm not on tour. That's why I don't win. <laughs> I can't get so, there. Yeah. But see, now that we've had a nice start and we've obviously got a job for next year, now we can kind of take these things to the, the level we need to go. And I'm, I'm not worried as much about what's going to happen. Right, right. If you had 80 grand right now in the bank, you know, we would. We'd be a little worried. Yeah, we'd be a little worried. But knowing. You know, after working with Joe, those those first two tournaments, I finished. Uh, you know, if I had made a nine, I would have finished twentieth, but I finished forty eighth. But I saw a lot of good stuff. And right. you know, I hit three. In the, I hit three on number. I was on my back nine. I'm five under. And I pumped three in the hazard, straight away, on the on the fourth hole coming in. I, you know, I started on the back, and I stood up there every time. And I hit the same shot. <laughs> I was not going to defer and go back middle. So well, you know, I'll just. You know, right. do whatever and just get it out and play now. I said, no, I'm sticking with it. And every ball started straight left. And we knew why, because the face was left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go. And then I birdied five, seven, and nine coming in. Yeah. I had seven birdies shot one under mm -hmm. with a nine. And I made a 25-footer for that nine. <laughs> so, but I knew that we were going the right direction. But, you know, if I, if I feel that, that it's correct, I'm not going to go away from it. I don't care where the ball goes. Right. If I know that that stuff's correct and I've seen it enough in practice, right, right, I'm going right. to stay with it. So, uh, you know, it got better in Hawaii because Hawaii's another tough course. You know you're not going to hit the fairway. Right. Because the fairways are very narrow. The winds are like this and the holes go like right. this. But, you know, I saw great shots. And then we got to uh, the Hope and, you know, I, I hit some good shots there. And by the time I got to Torrey, we started doing these drills. We did these drills for three days straight, just yeah. trying to get here in positions I've never been in. And Joe said, he goes, you can win this tournament. I said, Joe, I haven't hit a full shot in three days. <laughs> How yeah. am I going to go out there all of a sudden now and hit driver on every hole right. into narrow fairways? And I went out that first day and, and, and shot six, seven. I, you know, I thought, this is, that's nice. That's where, where now I can finally see where we're going here. And, right. you know, every day it just gets better and better. And we work, we, we, we bring in something new. And, you know, the media keeps saying, you know, well, your game's right there where it needs to be. I said, it's not right there. I said, you're not, you know, we're, we're halfway to what I think we need to be. I know there's a bunch of more things in there that I need to get, I get out of my game because coming on Sunday or Saturday or Sunday, there's shots that I still see that are out of play. The guys that win, right. they really don't hit those right. shots. Right. Well, the thing is, too, you've been used to getting it done a particular way for a long time. And so shaking that and, and going all in with what you're doing right now gets harder and harder and harder the more, more uh, the closer you are to the lead, yeah. the closer, the more you're in it, right? See, when I've played well, it's been because of my putting. If you look at any tournament that I've played well, I've putted unbelievable. Now, I wasn't the best in greens. I wasn't the best in fairways. I was very down the line, 70, 80, 90 hitting wise mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I, I you know either lead in putting or I was close to mm -hmm. leading in putting I made all the putts that you know mm -hmm. if not the, instead of finishing fourth you finished 40th mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now you know when I'm when I'm when I have these good finishes I'm doing both mm -hmm. you know yeah. I have so many more looks at, at at birdie and you know now if I miss a green we've got you know new chipping techniques which we'll do you know down the line here I'm actually able to chip the ball close I actually feel like I can make them right right you know, and that happened at Pebble. This happened at Pebble this year. I'm, you know, I hit a shot. Right. And 
I did everything right, but the, the path matched the face, and it went to the right on 16. You know, I'm like staring straight down at this thing. Yeah. You know, I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm in ninth place. I got to get it up and down. You know, playing 16. And I told H, I said, this is just like those shots we've been working on all week. Right. This little dead hand, wide open face. I said, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I think I can make this. Right. Right. And it came out perfect. Land perfect. Win the hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, there's a there's a lot that I see about you in general that's a lot different. Just you seem more uh, uh, not relaxed, composed. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you another piece of that whole thing. They say your attitude looks different. So, guys, let me let me explain, explain something. I'm not a guy that just walks around town angry, kicking cactus over, you know, <laughs> spitting a cat, something like that. that. That's not. I'm not an angry guy. No. I have a lot of friends. We have a great time together. But I said, let me explain something to you. When I'm on the course, and I do, and I play, and I, I know what I can do, yeah. and I never see it, you know, and I hit these bad shots, and then I go work on something, I'm not working on anything that's helping me, I'm just working. So right. I, I, and I said, guys, try doing something so long, and doing it bad, and never getting any answers about it. Right, right. I said, it's it just, it's beyond frustrating. Sure. It's sure. beyond frustrating, and you know, sometimes, I get hot. I hit a shot, and it's not the fact that I hit the shot. It's the fact I have zero idea why that shot went over there. Because when I get back over the next shot, right. I haven't corrected any of that. Right. The best, well, thing, yeah. the best thing about this is when I hit a bad shot now, me and H, you know, I'll hit it, and it goes over there in the bunker, and I'll come back and I said, all right, what do you see? What do you see? He goes, well, I start a little left, and I hooked too much. Okay. Well, then that's obviously coming left. You know, the face is shut because it started a little left. Now we have it. We sit here, and we don't get upset. We come back here, and we analyze. Right now we've got we've got and right. then we go over the round we've got this big analysis of where the balls went and where they you know right. now we have a perfect idea of why because right. now under, now understanding the ball flight laws right you know which way it starts and how it's high it's low it's right it's left it's right. I now have an idea so I'm not wasting energy on getting upset right because I actually have answers to why it's doing what it's doing right. so I told the I, you know media I talked to a bunch this year and I, I give them the same stuff I said guys it's, it's not that I'm calmer. I just have an understanding. Right. And when I right. understand why I hit a left, if I get that shot again, I know what not to do. Well, I would also offer up that knowing what you're trying to do is making you calmer. A lot calmer. You know what I, I mean? I, it's not sitting there and go, oh my God, I got an eight iron pins left. <laughs> well, I can't draw it, so what are we going to do here, right? Right. Am I really going to start over that bunker and let it fade over? Right. And then if a face happens to shut down, it goes in the water. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the understanding of it has is, is been monumental to, you know, the success that I've seen in the last four yeah. months.